Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar today on Atlas TI 9 for Windows. My name is Ivana Radovojevic and I'm the project coordinator with Atlas TI here in our Europe office. And today I have the pleasure of connecting with all of you to provide this introduction and global overview to Atlas TI. And so we'll see how Atlas TI looks and how it works. And so we'll see that it's a very flexible tool. We can use Atlas TI to accompany us in just about any qualitative research project. But uh, if any questions or doubts ever come up, you know, please count on our support. You can always send us an email or give us a call and we'll be happy to help. Uh, if you don't see the telephone number for your country listed here, you can take a look on our website to see all the telephone numbers for all of our international offices. Uh, in addition to this, if you do decide to eventually purchase your own license for Atlas TI, all of you can count on a 10% discount coupon. So if you do decide, you know, for any license type, uh, just send me an email uh, to either of these email addresses you see here, and I'd be more than happy to send that discount coupon along to you. So I'd like to begin by saying, what is Atlas TI? And well, what we're all looking at here today is a computer-assisted qualitative data analysis software. In other words, Atlas TI is a tool that we can use as researchers to facilitate our analysis of any kind of unstructured or non-numerical data, so any type of qualitative data. And now, although Atlas TI is not going to do the analysis for you, it can certainly help. And so we'll see how Atlas TI can accompany us throughout the entire process and as we make sense of our data and identify the different themes and patterns and, and meanings that we're seeing there. You can also use Atlas TI for teamwork. Uh, you can combine qualitative and quantitative analyses, uh, carry out triangulation, and of course you can analyze a great variety of types of data. So you might have textual data, but you can also have images or audio recordings, videos, uh, geographic data in the form of Google Earth Maps. You can also import data directly from Twitter, Evernote, uh, bibliographic reference managers, and Excel. And so, for example, if you've also conducted a survey and you had some open-ended questions there where people wrote out their responses, well, you can import all of this survey data into Atlas TI as well. And so today we're going to be looking at Atlas TI 9 for Windows. Uh, but I also wanted to point out that we have all these different platforms available here. And whenever you purchase a license for Atlas TI, you'll have access to all of these platforms included. And so uh, we have Atlas TI for Mac and Windows, our desktop versions. And of course, any project is perfectly compatible and transferable across both operating systems. So even if you yourself have a Windows and a Mac computer, or if you're working in a team with a mix of computers, you can certainly count on Atlas TI. Now we also have a, a mobile app version for tablets, like Android tablets or iPads. And you can always download this app for free, you know, whether or not you already have a license. And so this can be useful if you're maybe out in the field collecting data and you want to start putting your project together. Then, you could then I definitely recommend uh, taking a look at our Atlas TI mobile app. We also have an online version of Atlas TI, and that's Atlas TI Cloud. And so with an Atlas TI Cloud account, you don't need to download and install any software to your computer. Or really, you just need a computer with an internet connection, and you can log into your account online and continue analyzing your data. So we have all these different options here. And of course, any project created in Atlas TI Cloud or in the mobile app can be exported and then opened in the desktop version, so you can continue working on it. Uh, but I just wanted to point out that now with an Atlas TI license, you will always have access to all of these platforms included. In addition to this, uh, all of our licenses always include full functionality. In other words, it's a one-time purchase and you get the whole software. So there's no extra charges or hidden costs that'll come up later on down the road. And then of course, if you want to already get started with Atlas TI today, you can start the free trial. Now, aside from the licenses, you can also find a great variety of learning resources on our website. For example, if you and your group of colleagues or students uh, want to learn more about Atlas TI, you can request a free on-demand group demo webinar. Uh, basically, you can just let us know uh, what it is about Atlas TI that you want to learn more about, and then we will prepare a personalized one-hour online presentation for you and your group. Now, if you want to learn about Atlas TI in even more depth, you could always attend one of our premium trainings. We have uh, live online courses in real time, and we also have self-paced courses where you, where you have access to the course for 30 days and you can complete it according to your own rhythm and pace. And upon completing any of our premium trainings, you'll also receive an official certificate uh, from the Atlas TI Academy. And all that being said, if you ever do have any questions or doubts, you can always count on our free perpetual support. 
So without any further ado then, let's go ahead now and take a look at Atlas TI 9 for Windows. So here we are with Atlas TI 9. We've just opened the software and this is the welcome screen that we see. From here, we can see we can already create a new project, a brand new one. Or if we already have a project, then we can import it here. And so then we can easily see our projects and open them up again and continue working. Now here on the right hand side, we also have a lot of interesting information here. And so you can always uh, stay up to date with all of our latest news. You can also access our resources here. So if you ever want to see the quick tour, this is a great uh, guide for any first time users of the software. You can see the full user manual where you'll find all the detailed information about every single feature. And you can also access our sample projects. On the right hand side, you can also see our latest video tutorials. So for today, I'm going to show uh, one of our sample projects that we have, uh, where we were investigating uh, how people are evaluating the computer game Minecraft. And so just like any computer program, you know, we can see that we have the toolbar along the top. And uh, we have this also organized in a series of tabs so that you can also easily navigate throughout the software. And then if you're ever wondering what a particular button does or how it works, just hover your mouse over that button and then you'll see this help text appear uh, giving you more detailed information about that function there in particular. Now here on the left hand side we have the Project Explorer panel. And from this panel we're going to always be able to see and directly access any part of our project. So we'll take, we'll go through each of these today, uh, but let's start here with the documents. So the first thing we see in the list, we have 47 documents in this project and we can open up the list and see them. Okay, so then what is a document in Atlas TI? Well, a document simply refers to any source of information that we're going to be analyzing. So in other words, our documents are our data. And remember, we can have data uh, in the form of text. And in addition to text documents, we can also have multimedia documents. So they could be videos or audio recordings. Uh, we could also have documents that are images. So we have static images here that we can also analyze. Anything that we're going to be analyzing will add to Atlas TI as a document. And to add your documents to your project, just go to the Home tab and click on Add Documents. And so with our documents added then, let's see how do we go about then analyzing this data. So I'm going to open up a document here that we haven't yet gone through and analyzed, so we can take a look here with the clean working space. And so we have here an article that's forming a part of our literature review. And so how do we then go about analyzing text? Well, we're going to go through and read the document. And then whenever you come across anything that captures your attention, uh, anything that can help you answer your research question, well, all you have to do is highlight that segment of the text. And you can highlight as much or as little as you want. So you choose which segments of text here are relevant for you. And now to save this, we can right click, and then we have some different options here. We can simply save this free quotation. So if we click on this button, now in the margin area on the right hand side, we see this blue vertical bar. And so this bar is simply showing us the size and location of a quotation in this document. So a quotation refers to any segment of data that we, the researchers, have selected and saved. And if we just want to go through highlighting the segments of the data that capture our attention, of course we can do that. And so we can have these quotations here without anything else attached to them. And so then maybe later we'll come back or, you know, do something else with it. But certainly we're not forced to do anything with the quotation if, if we prefer not to. Now, on the other hand, as we uh, continue analyzing our qualitative data, uh, maybe we do want to start organizing these quotations and kind of capturing some of our analysis of all of this data that we're seeing here. And so one of the most, you know, common ways that we analyze qualitative data is by coding the data. And so what do we mean by this? How do we go through coding data here? Well, we're going to do the same thing as we've been doing so far. We'll just uh, highlight those relevant segments of text that we see here. And now what we can do is associate codes to this quotation. So if we right click, we can apply codes. When we click this, the coding dialog box opens. And so we can see all of the codes that we've already created in this project. And we can also create any new code right here. So for example, I can see that in this quotation, what we're talking about here is uh, 
talking openly about video games. So we can just type the name of the code that we want to attach here, click on the plus button, and then the code is attached. And so now we see this code also appears next to our quotation in the margin area. So what exactly is a code then? You know, what are we doing here? I mean, a code can be simply a word or a short phrase that's describing something you're seeing in the data. You can also think of codes as tags that you're creating and attaching to all of these quotations so you can organize all this rich, detailed information. And then we can start exploring, you know, overarching patterns among these codes. Now, we can create as many codes as we want, uh, and we can attach as many codes as we want to any quotation. You know, so definitely you can uh, certainly apply Atlas TI within whichever qualitative methodology you're following to code your data. And so, for example, I can see here that this is also talking about the popularity of Minecraft. So let's go ahead and add that code, too. And so we can see our codes here. And from this coding dialog, so we can easily see all the codes we already have in the project. And if you ever want to add one of these already existing codes, just click on the plus button and that'll also be included. And so we can also toggle between the full list of codes or just see the codes that have been applied to this quotation. So we can go through reading the text and highlighting different segments and attaching our codes. We can create any new codes that we might like. And we can always also see all of our codes on the left hand side. And if we ever want to use any of the codes that we've already created, so like here, let's imagine again, it's talking about the popularity of Minecraft. Well, we can add this code to this quotation by simply dragging and dropping it. And then Atlas TI saves the quotation and has added the code for us. And so those are the different ways that we can go about coding our data here. And coding is definitely a really important part of the qualitative analysis because this is how we're going to start condensing all of this rich information and making sense of what's going on here. But coding is one part of the whole qualitative analysis process, and there's another also very important part here. And well, you know, coding is relatively easy to do. I mean, we go through highlighting the text and attaching our codes. But as we're going through and reading this text, you know, I also have a lot of ideas uh, floating around in my mind, and I'd like to have somewhere to write these ideas down. So this is where memos come in. A memo is essentially a notebook. It's a blank space that we can use to write down anything that we would like. And of course, we can create as many memos as we want. So let's go ahead and create a, a new memo here. And so let's, let's imagine here, you know, they're talking about this, the, the popularity of this game and how that's affecting people. So I want to create a new memo where we'll write all our ideas there. So we go to the Home tab and we can create a new memo by clicking on New Entities. So I'll go ahead and give it a name. So you can give your memos any kinds of descriptive names you'd like. And then Atlas TI opens up this blank space for us. And so now, just like any you know, text editing program, you can change the structure, fonts, or format, uh, insert the date and time, or pictures, hyperlinks, you know, so you can really put all sorts of different information here. I think inserting the date and time, for example, is really helpful for keeping track of all of your notes as you know, you're developing your analysis. And so here, then, we can write our ideas and notes and reflections about what's going on in the data, our own critical analyses. Or we can also jot down any doubts or questions that are coming to our mind. And so, or, you know, we can even use memos just to keep a list of our tasks that we have to do every day. So, I mean, of course, we can use memos in a lot of different ways. But I definitely do encourage you, you know, whenever something pops into your head, just take a moment and jot it down in a memo. Because we never know. It could be the beginnings of a great idea. Or it might be something that doesn't, you know, ends up not really leading anywhere. But definitely by forcing ourselves to put our thoughts into words, it'll really help us crystallize our understanding of what's going on in all of this rich data. And so here, for example, I could say, uh, oh, I find it very interesting that Ellison et al. So I can see here how to cite the document. We put that in the title there. Uh, talked about the popularity of the game because that's something that another participant said, and I think this and that, and you know, so on. And, and so here we write down all of our ideas. And then we can save the memo and close it, and go back to our, day, uh, back to our document. Now, before uh, moving on and continuing reading, 
you know, it was this quotation here in particular that inspired our reflections that we wrote down in our memo. And so we're going to want to make sure that we'll remember that that memo was talking about this quotation, right? Well, just like we can associate codes to our quotations, we can also associate memos. And we can do that in the exact same way we did before. We can see all our memos on the left-hand side. And now to attach this memo to this quotation, we're just going to drag and drop. And there it is. And now we can even double click it to get a preview of the memo. And we can open it up again and continue writing. And so in this way, we can, you know, note down all of our ideas as we're going through all this data analysis. And the fact that we can directly associate the memos to the quotations is an incredibly helpful feature because, you know, on the one hand, we're already writing out the rough drafts of our final article here. And on the other hand, you know, we can already directly associate everything we're saying with the empirical evidence that's supporting that. And so this, I would say, is really the foundation of the analysis in Atlas TI. We go through selecting quotations, you know, segments of relevant data, associating our codes and writing in our memos. And if we do this part well, then everything that comes after will certainly be a lot easier. I think this is where we're going to spend the most of our time working in Atlas TI. And so this is, of course, how we would go through, you know, manually analyzing all this information. And that's, of course, always important with qualitative data. Uh, but, you know, on the other hand, this being a computer software, we can also, of course, take advantage of some of the tools that we have here to help kickstart our analysis. So, for example, uh, I've just added this article here. And to be honest, I haven't even read it yet. So I still don't know, you know, what it's about in, in, in full detail. Uh, and before, you know, starting to read it all, I'd like to just get a quick global overview of what are the main concepts in this article. In other words, I want to conduct a content analysis. We can easily create word lists and word clouds by clicking on the buttons up here. And then Atlas TI will generate a word cloud and show us all of the most frequently occurring words in this document here. And so we can get this very nice overview right away of what are the main things being talked about. And then if we hover our mouse over each word, we can see exactly how many times it's appearing. Now, of course, and is the most frequently occurring word. That's not very surprising, but that's also not, you know, very interesting for my content analysis. You know, in fact, I'd rather just have this automatically excluded from the word cloud. Well, we can easily apply uh, stop lists. We can put stop lists or goal lists. So if you want to exclude certain words or only focus on certain words. And so uh, when you first download Atlas TI, you might see that here no lists are appearing. But we do have stop word lists available in over 30 languages. And so if we click on edit here to edit our list, we can easily import the list right here. And so just then choose the language that you're interested in. And then we'll add that list. And then if we go back to our word cloud, now we can select our English stop word list. And so then this automatically excludes all those words like a and the of, you know, so that we can just focus on the more interesting words here for our content analysis. Now, apart from that, we can also manually remove any words. And so if you just right click, you can also easily remove the words from the word cloud. If you want, you can continue to edit this word cloud. You know, we can change the layout or how it's ordered, you know, what the threshold is that a word has to appear a minimum number of times. And of course, we can save this word cloud as an image file. And then this can be something interesting to include in the final report or presentation. And so, for example, you know, it does catch my attention that learning is coming up so frequently. And so I'd like to see what is it that these authors are saying about learning. So let's go back to our document here. And so whenever we want to uh, search for a particular word, we can also take advantage of the auto coding tools. So if we click on search and code up here, we can see we have a variety of automatic coding tools that we can use. Because uh, we said we want to look for where learning is appearing in the article here, let's go ahead and just start with a text search. So now we can tell Atlas TI what document we want to focus on. So we already have the document open selected. And for now, I just want to stick with this one document. But if we ever wanted to look at multiple documents or a particular group of documents, of course, we can also select that here. And then we tell Atlas TI what word we want to look for. So we can type in here learning. And then basically, whenever Atlas TI finds this word, what it's going to do is automatically save a quotation and associate a code for us. 
So we can tell Atlas TI, you know, where do we want it to search for this word and what size quotation should it save? And so we can select which one we want. And we can also include synonyms. And so we can tell Atlas TI, okay, look for where they're talking about learning, but also I want to see about developing or evolving, growing, education. So we can also just select all of these words or you can choose, you know, which specific synonyms you may be interested in. And if you want to look for more than one word, you know, maybe combined words or phrases or sentences where both of these words appear, you can enter additional words here and use the Boolean operators to tell Atlas TI whether you want both of the words or either of the words appearing. You know, so it's a very, uh, it's a very uh, customizable search process here. We can also include all inflected forms of the word. And so in that case, Atlas TI will tell us every time learning appears, but also learn or learned every other form of this word. And so again, this is incredibly helpful to make sure that we are getting every instance in which this word is appearing. So once we've set up the search that we want to look for here, we can go ahead and click on show results and see what we find. And so Atlas TI shows us every time that it finds the word and we can see the sentence where it appears. So we can go through and read the results here. And then anytime we find anything that we want to save, you know, this seems interesting, definitely going to be relevant for me, then we can attach a code. And so we can do it just as we did before by right clicking and using the option here. Uh, you can also just click on the code icon here and it's the same thing. We open that coding dialog and, uh, and we can type our code here. And so we can go through in this way coding the data and we can see our margin area again here so we can see exactly what codes we have attached. Now on the other hand, if we want to perhaps save all of these results, you know, instead of going through one by one, I'd want to attach one code to multiple quotations here. Well, we can select multiple quotations just by clicking and holding the control key, for example. Or if we press control A, we'll highlight all of them. And then we can apply codes to all of them at once by clicking on the button up here. And so again, we can just type the code name and then add it. And Atlas TI will add this code to all of our quotations. And so that way we can also easily save everything we found here. And we can always easily go back. If we want to adjust the search or add more words or try looking for different words, so we can easily navigate throughout all of these windows here in the text search and then go through coding the results. And so now if we go back to the document, we can see all of these quotations that we've just saved. So that was a bit about how we can search for any specific word in all of our text documents. But we also have some additional uh, really great automatic coding tools here. So let's take a look at a uh, named entity recognition. So once again here, you know, we can select whichever documents we want to look at. You know, maybe here I'll select a couple of our documents from our participants. Now with named entity recognition, rather than telling Atlas TI what words we wanted to search for, Atlas TI is going to go through the data and it's going to automatically search for whenever in this data people are talking, or you know, whenever in this text, I suppose, any mentions about people is coming up or about any locations, organizations, or anything else, such as uh, museums or, or works of arts or other kinds of cultural things. So basically, instead of us telling Atlas TI what to look for, Atlas TI is going to go through and look for any time any of these entities is appearing in the data. And once again, it can automatically code it for us. And then we click on continue, and Atlas TI will go through all of these documents that we've selected and show us all of the entities here. So right now we're seeing all of the results but it is easier to perhaps focus on one entity at a time. So let's go ahead and just see what kind of people were mentioned in the data. So we can see here the exact uh, names being mentioned. And if we want to save any of these, so for example, where they were talking about Clinton, then we just tick that box. And so then we can, we can see these results in the next page of where was it that people were talking about Clinton? Where were people talking about Jane McGonigal? And so you can go through in this way. If you want, you can also just select all of them. And let's see, and Lewis Allison. And then here at the bottom, we can also tell Atlas TI what kind of code name we wanted to give. So we can see the code name here. 
and how it will look. And so if we wanted to have the category and the entity name, or just the category or just the entity, and then we show results. And so we can see every time this person appears, and, it, and just like before, we can add our codes right here or add the suggested code just by clicking on the plus button. And we can also click on apply proposed codes to select which codes we want to apply here. And it'll go ahead and automatically code for all of those. And just like before, we can go back then and then say, okay, now instead of people, I want to see what locations are being talked about. And once again, we can go through and select all of the kinds of locations we'd like to see here. So with named entity recognition, we can easily search for all these different kinds of entities that might appear across our data. And finally, let's take a look at sentiment analysis. So this is another special kind of autocoding where what Atlas TI will do is go through all of the data and let us know wherever it finds any any instances in the text where people are expressing positive, neutral, or negative sentiments. And so just like before, we specify the search and what kinds of codes we want here. And then Atlas TI shows us all the results. And so we can see where people are saying something positive or where something negative is coming up or neutral. And again, we can either individually code these results or just apply all of the proposed codes here. And so then we automatically save all of that. So sentiment analysis is great if you want to get an idea of people's tones or reactions to something. So again, we have all that information coded now. Now we've seen a lot about how we can analyze text data, uh, but I'd also like to show how can we go about analyzing other kinds of data. You know, maybe I also have uh, interview recordings or you've done observations where you have videos and you'd also like to analyze what's going on there. In our project here, we have a video of the actual computer game. And so we can see exactly how it looks. And, you know, that way we can kind of cross-reference this with what the participants were talking about. So we can add our videos or audio recordings into Atlas TI and open them up. And then, of course, straight from here, we can watch this video and listen to it. We can change the, the volume here at the top as well. You can change the playback rate if you want it to go faster or slower. And so now we can go through analyzing this uh, video data here. But we go through and listen to our video or audio, and then we're going to do the exact same thing we've been doing all along. We're going to select segments to save quotations and associate our codes and memos. So to select a segment of a video or audio, well, we're just going to go over to the right hand side where we have this familiar margin area. And then whenever you want to save a segment of the video, just click on the timeline here, drag and drop. And then Atlas TI saved this quotation for us. And if we click on the play button, we can replay exactly this quotation. So we can revise exactly this segment of the video. And then we can now add our codes here. So just like always, you know, we can just right click. Uh, we can click on the buttons up here as well in the toolbar. And of course, we can also just drag and drop our codes from the left hand side. So to create any quotations on a video or audio file, just go to the right hand side where you have the timeline and drag and drop. Now, if you prefer as well, while you are watching or listening to your to your file here, you can also manually mark the start and end points of your quotations as the video is playing. And on the other hand, if we want to analyze the visual aspects of what's going on here in even more depth, we can also capture snapshots. And so if you click on this camera up here, Atlas TI will basically take a screenshot of what you have on your, on your screen here in the video. And it's now just added this as a new image that we have in our list of documents. So we can see here we have a new document and this is indeed a static image. And so now we can also go into more detail here to analyze. And so we're going to do the exact same thing that we've been doing all along. And that's selecting segments of the data and then associating our codes and memos. So to create quotations and images, we just click, drag and drop. And then we form this rectangle that we can move around or resize. And as always, we can right click or use the buttons above or drag and drop our codes from the left hand side. And so now we know how we can analyze textual data of video and audio data and images.
But always we're just going through this process of selecting these segments of data and then attaching our own codes and analyses and reflections to make sense of everything. So now let's imagine we've gone through and uh, we've been coding a lot in our data and we have a long list of codes here. And now it's time to maybe take a step back and take a look at what codes we have coming up and perhaps start to organize this list of codes a bit. So whenever we want to organize any of these entities in our project, what we can do is open up its manager. And so from the home tab, we can see all of the managers right here. And so we have a manager for each of our main entities. And so since we want to organize our codes, let's go ahead and open up the codes manager here. And so from the codes manager, we can see all of the codes that we have in our project. And we can see more detailed information on each one. So for example, we also get two numbers here next to our codes. And so what groundedness is telling us is how many quotations are associated with this code. And density is telling us how many links this code has with any other codes in the project. Now we'll take a look at density in a moment now when we, open, when we create some networks. And down below, we can see the comment space. Now, every single individual object in Atlas TI has its own comment space. And this simply serves as a space where we can write any additional information about that object in particular. So you can think of the comment space as a sort of sticky note that's always going to be attached to that object. So when it comes to writing comments on codes, what we always recommend is to take advantage of this space to write out the operational definition of each of your codes, to say what exactly is this code referring to. And this is also a great way to show transparency in your work. Now, one way that we can organize our codes is by creating groups. And so we can see on the left-hand side here, we have a lot of different code groups. And uh, whenever we click on any code, of course, any groups that it belongs to appears in, in bold here. And so how do we then create groups? How do we, you know, organize our codes with this? Well, to create a group, all we have to do is select the codes we want to group together and then drag and drop them to the left-hand side. And now we can give this group a name, and there we have it. We can create as many groups as we want, and any single code can belong to more than one group. So if we want to add a code to an already existing group, we can just drag and drop it in. And so in this way, we can create all sorts of different kinds of groups and then use this to organize all of our codes. And later we'll see how we can also use groups to filter our analysis. And so if we want to focus on specific things or, or compare and contrast between groups. So groups are a great way to organize the list of codes. But now another tip that we have, as you may have noticed here in our list of codes, we have also put prefixes on our codes here. So what we've done here is whenever we wrote a code in all capital letters, this was to indicate that this code is basically the name of a category of codes that we have here. So parents mentioned a lot of different benefits and downsides of this game. And so what we have here, you know, we have the subcodes, the specific kinds of benefits being mentioned. But by putting this prefix, we ensure that all of the codes will appear together in the list. And then in addition to using prefixes and creating groups, we can also put colors on our codes. And so to color a code, just select it here, and then we can change the color at the top. And so that's also a nice way, since it's so visual, the colors, and we'll also see them on the left-hand side. And so that's also an, a really helpful way to organize all these codes here. And so with the code manager, we can definitely, you know, clean up our code list. We can also merge codes together or split codes into smaller codes, you know, and so do all of this work here. And another really helpful feature is that we can export reports. And so let's imagine, you know, we've coded some data here. And uh, like we said, parents mentioned a lot of different benefits of playing the game. And now I'd like to see what it is the parents said exactly. You know, let's imagine I'm writing up the rough draft of my article and I'm, you know, writing about all the benefits we found. So I want to retrieve all of this data we have about what people, what benefits were mentioned. So let's go ahead and export a report. So we always have the option to either export a text report, and so we can save it as a Word or a PDF file, or we can save it as a table, and so then we'll save it in an Excel spreadsheet. So since I want to see all the quotations, all the data here, I do find it easier to read in a Word document, so I'll select the report option here. And now we just tell Atlas TI what information do we want included in this report. And so we just tick the boxes here. 
So for example, do we want to see the comments that we wrote on these codes? Well, yes, I do think it'll be helpful to see the definitions there. And we want to see the quotations attached to these codes. Absolutely. And we want to see the full content of the quotations. Let's also see what other codes we have attached to these quotations. And any memos as well. And if we do have a memo, I also want to see that content. So, as you can see, you can add as much or as little information as you want in these reports. And by clicking on these drop-down arrows, you can continue to include more detailed information on all these uh, different specific things that we have here in the report. So it's really a fully customizable report here. And let's go ahead and click on Create. And so now Atlas TI is pulling together all of this information for us and putting it together in one single document. And so we see the name of the project and the report and when it was created and what kind of report it is. And so we see our codes and our global code. We don't have anything attached there because that was just a, you know, the kind of a placeholder code. But then here we have our first type of benefit of building things. And we can see all of the data. And so we can see the full quotation and we can also see all the other codes we have attached here. And so above each quotation, we can see its exact reference. And so this is telling us that this quotation comes from document five and this document is named case four. And this is the first quotation in our fifth document. And in particular, this quotation is coming from the second paragraph. Now, another really helpful thing when it comes to analyzing qualitative data and making sense of all of this rich information that we have here is to, well, uh, visually explore what's going on. So let's go ahead and create a network. And so let's create a brand new network here. So again, just like before, we go to new entities, new network, and then we can type the name here. And then in this network, let's go ahead and uh, let's focus on those benefits that are being mentioned. So we open up the network here, a new blank space, and in Atlas TI, we can visualize any part of our project in a network. So we have all those codes about benefits, so let's go ahead and start with those. And so to add these to the network, all we're going to do is drag and drop. And so we have, as we said, these different subcodes here. But I want to show that these are hierarchically linked to our global code up here, that these are all a part of this one. Now here we can see we have a link between these codes that was created in another network we made before. So also any work that we do with all of these different parts of our project of course, Atlas TI is remembering that. And so then if we open them up in a network, we can also see all the links and connections across everything. But okay, so here, uh, what we want to do now is show that this code is a part of this one. So to link any objects together in a network, just click on the first one you want to begin with, and then this circle appears in the corner. So all we have to do is click on this circle and then drag and drop to the code we want to link this with. And then when we let go, we can choose a name for this relation. So we're saying that this code is part of this code. So we click on the little circle that appears in the corner, drag and drop, and choose a name for this relation. So Atlas TI provides this list of relation names that we can use, but of course we do not have to restrict ourselves to this, and we can create any kind of new relation type that we would like here. So maybe I want to say this is actually influencing what this one does. And so we can even specify the color of the line, as well as the, the property of the line, you know, which direction it should be moving in. And so with this, we have a well, relatively simple, but certainly easy to understand network showing us the different kinds of benefits that were mentioned by our participants. Now, if we want, we can also continue to view more detailed information here. So if we click on the View tab here at the top, we can also include more information in our network. For example, we can see all the comments that we wrote. So we can exactly see those operational definitions of all of our codes right here in the network. And so this is really great, you know, because then anyone who looks at this network will already be able to understand what we mean by these concepts. We can also show the frequencies of all of our codes. So here again, we see those numbers of groundedness and density, telling us how many quotations are attached and we can also see how many links this code has with other codes in the project. So I'm just going to refresh our network here. I'll just close it and open it again. And so we'll see that updated density. 
So for example, we can see our code here has a density of five because it has five links with other codes in the project. It's linked to five other codes here. So that's just to give you an idea of what these numbers are telling us about all the codes in Atlas TI. So, you know, taking a look here, I can see that about the benefit of collaboration, you know, we have eight quotations attached here, but I can't quite remember what it was the parents said about this. And I'd like to refresh my memory about what, you know, what our data was saying about collaboration. So let's go ahead and bring those quotations in. If you right click on any object in a network, you can also add any of its neighbors, anything else that's been associated to this code here. And so we can choose what we want to add. In this case, I just want to look at those quotations. And Atlas TI brings them in for us. And so we can see the quotations that have been linked to this code. And if it so happens that the quotation was coded with other codes in the network, Atlas TI is showing us that. So we can see this quotation had three codes on it. And okay, right now it's showing us the names of the quotations. Uh, I mean, we can edit these names if we want, but you know, rather I would just directly like to see the whole content of the quotation. So we can just click on preview and we can see our full quotations right here in the network. And so we can see the text quotations and also if we have image quotations, we'll be able to see that here. And so this is very helpful to go exploring the data and seeing what we have here and as well to include some illustrative extracts from your data. And remember, we can include any part of our project in the network. So why don't we also include that memo that we wrote before? So we can also see the memo here and even link this to the different parts. And now that we've added all these extra things to our network, you know, I would like to maybe organize this a little bit so we don't have all of these overlapping pieces and so on. And well, we can use any of these automatic layout options that we have in Atlas TI9 for Windows. And so we can explore different ways of organizing all of the nodes in our network. And so this is a, also a great way to explore the data and the connections across everything, and as well just to very quickly and easily kind of clean up the network. And then if we want to save this network, you know, outside of Atlas TI, I want to put this in my final article or in my presentation about my research. Well, we just click on export and then we can save this uh, in a variety of image formats. And so we can click on export as bitmap and then choose here what kind of format we want. Be that PNG, JPEG, GIF, TIFF. Uh, we can also save it as a PDF file. And so then this is certainly a great way to communicate what we're finding in our analysis or to show how all the different parts are related to each other. We can even build conceptual frameworks here or just use this to kind of summarize our findings. And so now I'd like to take a look at some of the other uh, analysis tools that we have here in Atlas TI. And so now we've seen all of the main parts of the project that we have here, our data, our codes, memos, networks, and then also that we can create groups of all these different objects to organize them and to filter our analyses. And so now what if I do want to do a more in-depth analysis? You know, I do now, I wanna start comparing, for example, what we found from our participants who do play the game themselves and those who don't. So whenever we want to do these kinds of more analyses where we're really interrogating or querying the data, that's where we'll head to our Analyze tab here. And so once we've coded everything and then we want to start exploring what's going on. And so we have some different tools here. Uh, let's go ahead and begin with the Query tool. So with the Query tool, we can search for any quotation in our project. And so we see here we have our list of code groups as well as our individual codes. And so let's imagine uh, we wanted to see all of the benefits that people mentioned, right? And so we could either select all the individual codes or just directly select the group. You know, I want to see any of the codes inside here. If we double click, we load it in the query space and down below we can see the results. So we can see all of the quotations associated to any of the codes inside this group. And so this is a relatively straightforward query. And in fact, this is exactly what we did when we exported that report before. Uh, but the great thing about the query tool is that we can create combinations of codes or code groups. So, you know, I don't just want to see uh, what benefits were mentioned, but I want to see in particular what people said about benefits when they were talking about the game being educational. So I want to see any quotations that have been coded with this code, as well as one of our codes about this being an educational game. 
So we can create combinations of codes by using any of these operators that we have up here. And now remember, we don't need to memorize what every button does in Atlas TI. Uh, if we just hover our mouse over each one, we can see exactly what this operator is and how it works. And so now we click here. And although we see fewer quotations, these are certainly much more meaningful quotations. Because here we're seeing every instance in the data where participants talked about uh, the game being educational as well as one of its benefits. And so we can conduct these more complex queries and really hone in on the data. Now as well, you know, I want to compare between parents who do play and parents who don't. And now I only want to focus on those that actually do play. So we can also edit the scope of the query. When we click on Edit Scope, then we can specify exactly which documents or document groups should we be looking for here. And so if we double click, then we load it in the scope space, and then the query results also adjust. So now it's showing us, showing us the results of what parents who play said when they talked about uh, the benefits as well as the game being educational. And so we can cross all these different parts of our analysis and project to see what results come up. And then to save this, we can export a report. So again, we have this button here, and we can either select the options ourselves like we did before, but also from the query tool, we have these kind of automatic options here where the boxes have already been ticked for us. <laughs> and so we just tell Atlas TI what kind of report do we want it to put together for us. And so there we have, we can see exactly what kind of scope it is and all of the resulting data. And next, let's take a look at the code co-occurrence table. So with this tool, what we're going to be analyzing is the co-occurrence of any of our codes. So what do we mean by this? Well, code co-occurrence is referring to any time uh, in any part of our data that we have two codes appearing together. So this could be that uh, the two codes are on the same quotation, they're associated with the same quotation, or perhaps they're in quotations that are overlapping. So let's go ahead and take a look with an example here. So one thing that we also coded for in our data was how people were describing the game. And so we have all of their responses here. And so I'd like to see when people were describing the game, whether they tended to emphasize more benefits or downsides. So we simply taking a look at our list of codes here, we just tick the boxes to tell Atlas TI which codes we want to put in columns and which codes we want to put in rows. So here I'll go ahead and select the benefits and downsides for our rows and Atlas TI builds the table for us. So we can already see here we have a table showing us the exact frequencies and down below we have a wonderful new visualization tool in that with Atlas TI 9 we can now easily build Sankey diagrams. So let's take a look at each of these one by one. So for the time being I'll just hide the Sankey diagram and let's focus on the table. So what this table is telling us is that this code is co-occurring two times with this code. If we click on the cell, we can see the exact quotations on the right-hand side. So in two instances throughout this data, when people said that the game is addictive, at the same time, they also mentioned this benefit that the game is about, or that the game allows you to build things. And so we can see here, whenever people talked about the game being addictive, what benefits were mentioned, as well as what downsides. And so we can move throughout the table and explore all these different co-occurrences here. And so now, you know, we're familiar with this list of quotations as we've been seeing throughout Atlas TI. If you ever want to uh, see a quotation in its full context, just double click and Atlas TI will open up the exact documents in place where this quotation is occurring. So we're always staying close to the data. Uh, we're not removing the data from its context. And so with this code co-occurrence table, we're able to easily see here what kinds of descriptions are corresponding with what kinds of parts of the game. And so this helps us get more nuanced insights about what's going on in our data. Now, if we want to save this table, we can export it to Excel. And then that's also something interesting to include in the final reports or the presentation of our research. Now, speaking of presentations, we certainly can't uh, also ignore the great help of the Sankey diagram. So now let's just take a look at the diagram here. I've expanded it so we can focus on this. And so what the Sankey diagram is showing us I mean, it's the exact same information of before, the co-occurrences between all these codes, but now we can see this in a visual way. 
And so if you hover your mouse over any code here, any part of the diagram, then of course Atlas TI will highlight that part. And so we can see uh, when people mention the benefit of being creative, we can see that this corresponded particularly strongly with descriptions of the game being challenging. And so hmm, maybe there's this relation between, you know, the game needs to be challenging and that's what makes people be more creative. And so what this Sankey diagram does here is it takes into account all of these co-occurrences that we have going on, but it's also showing us visually because the, the frequency, so the number here, is also corresponding to the width of the lines. And so where you see thicker lines, that's because there's higher co-occurrences there. And where it's thinner lines, of course, there we have lower co-occurrences. But so very quickly and easily, we can get this overview of which codes are appearing together and which ones are appearing together more or less frequently. But also same as before, you know, if we click, we'll see the quotations here on the right hand side. And we can also edit this diagram. So if we also want to maybe move some of these parts around, we can also rotate it. Uh, we can decide what kinds of colors we want to use. If we want to stick to the colors that we gave in the codes or use a gradient between them. We can also give it a dark background. And then of course we can print this diagram and save it as a PDF file. And this is certainly something very interesting to include in the final report, the presentation, to show visually how the codes are relating to one another. Now finally, let's take a look at the code document table. So again here, we're going to be building a table, uh, but now we're going to be looking at code frequencies in any of our documents. So now in our table, we're going to cross codes with documents, and so we can compare how many times codes are appearing across all the different parts of our project. And so again here, we can either select individual codes or groups, so again, it just depends on what information you're interested in seeing. So maybe, you know, we can stick with our example of benefits. If we want to see how many times participants mention these different kinds of benefits. And so I'd select each individual code because I want to see how many times each individual one came up instead of the aggregate. But of course, we can choose. <laughs> and then which documents do we want to look at? Now, I could select all my participants here. But actually, I want to directly compare between those who play and those who don't. So we remember we have these groups here. And so then I'm just going to select the document groups right away. And so let's take a look. So in the table here, we can easily see that uh, for parents who do not play, so the benefit of this being something educational came up or being able to build things, but then curiously enough, when it came to parents who do play the game, other things like creativity or skill development came up more frequently. So this table is showing us simply how many times this code appears in any of the documents inside this group. And again, if we click on the cell, we can see the exact quotations here on the right hand side. And so now it's showing us the absolute frequency. It's just how many times this code appears in any of these documents. But you know, it might be the case, and actually we can see that here, that we have 18 uh, participants who do not play the game, and we have 7 who do. So naturally, you know, we have much more data here, more documents and quotations, so we're going to have higher numbers, higher frequencies than we do here. But then that means we can't directly compare these absolute frequencies. Well, fortunately, Atlas TI is here to help us, and we can very easily normalize these counts. And so if you just select the button up here, then Atlas TI is going to take into consideration how much information is behind each of these, you know, how many quotations we have there, and then it'll adjust the it'll and then it'll adjust these numbers so that we can indeed directly compare them. And what's more, we can look at relative frequencies. So we can tell Atlas TI if we want to look at column relative frequencies. So if parents who do not play, we can clearly see the most frequently. So um, almost one third of them talked about the educational benefits. While parents who do play, you know, we have more dispersed answers here about the different kinds of benefits. But relative frequencies help us get an even better understanding of where across all of our information these codes are appearing. And so we can choose what kinds of relative frequencies we want, of rows, columns, or the whole table. And then if we want to save this, we can again export it to Excel. And so now let's take a look at the Sankey diagram to see how is this helping us understand our code frequencies. So I'll go ahead and expand that a bit. And so just like we saw before, I mean, so again, we have the same options for editing and working with the diagram here. And so now 
we have here our document group. So we have all of the data from parents who do play and parents who don't. And so with that, we've seen our global overview of Atlas TI 9 Windows. And so, uh, well, with that, I hope that you've all enjoyed our, our overview of Atlas TI 9 for Windows. And so now you have an idea of how the software works and you know how you can use it for your own qualitative research projects. And so I'll just put up here once again our contact information. So please feel free to take a note. And uh, if any questions ever do come up, you know, just give us a call or send us an email and we'll be happy to help. But I hope that you enjoyed the presentation. And, um, and other than that, I just want to wish everyone all the best of luck on your qualitative data analysis journeys with Atlas TI.